Hello everybody, my name is Joe Anklum and I'm 19 years old and I'm from Waukesha, Wisconsin and today I'll be going over a Q&A. These questions come from my Instagram and basically a few days ago I asked some of my followers, all of my followers, to ask me a few questions regarding fitness, myself, or pretty much anything and I got a quite a bit, um, a quite a good amount of responses um, and some pretty good questions. One thing I do want to say guys before I begin is that all the answers that I will be giving in this video are just that. They are my answers. They are solely my opinion. I am really just answering these questions guys based on my own experiences and what I have learned. So if you do disagree with me like I said, um, please comment below. I'm willing to um, hear you guys out definitely. But please do not get mad at me or tell me I'm an idiot or whatever um, because this is what I have experienced and um, what I have learned in my lifting career and in my fitness journey altogether. So hope you guys enjoy the Q&A. Here we go. The first question was asked by one of my friends actually, Eric Munoz. I hope I'm saying your name right man. Basically asking what progression scheme do I use? And that is kind of a loaded question. Um, and that is only because I train powerlifting as well as high volume bodybuilding style training. And being that is the case, um, I use very different progression styles for each of them. So in order to not make this too lengthy of an answer, um, progressive overload is pretty much the key in both, but mainly bodybuilding. As far as my bodybuilding training, it normally takes place after my powerlifting movements for whatever specific workout I am doing that day. And with that being said, those bodybuilding movements are normally between 4 and 5 sets, um, between 10 and 15 reps. So with that being the case, I'm not really looking at overall weight being moved. I'm not trying to increase my weight on those different exercises um, necessarily every workout. Um, but really I'm working on the squeeze and the contraction of whatever muscle I'm working in that specific exercise. So yes, over time I'm going to progress, and that is where you hear progressive overload, um, but really I'm focusing on my form, keeping the tension on that specific muscle group like I said, and really that is what I'm focusing on more so than increasing the weight um, every single workout. So I hope that kind of answers your question, man. As far as powerlifting, I can do a whole separate video about powerlifting because it's more complicated than that, as well as the bodybuilding side. Either way, if you guys would like me to do a separate video, I would be more than willing. And it's not very complicated. It's just something that I wouldn't be able to explain in this Q&A. So if you guys would like a video on that, please comment below. I'd be more than willing. The next question we have comes from my Instagram follower, Quant Quantum Bars. I would assume that's how you say it. I'm sorry if I'm not saying these names correctly. Um, but he asked, how much do you think is genetics? Really, genetics are what are going to give you the shape of all your muscles, how your muscles, um, how your muscle insertions look, basically how aesthetic you're going to look. And there's nothing you can really do about that, um, and you can really just embrace it. Your body is your body, and you're, um, you're naturally, if you're naturally lean, if you're naturally heavier set, um, you can't really do anything about that. So yes, in that aspect, genetics are pretty much the only thing that is creating you. Um, but with that being said, um, people out there who say they have poor genetics or they um, their genetics aren't ideal, um, that may be true, but um, you really are limiting yourself if you're going to think that because you might not have the most aesthetic physique or the greatest um, genetics when it comes to leanness or building muscle that does not mean you can't achieve a physique that you really really have dreamed about and um, that is where the people get this misconception that just because you're not genetically gifted doesn't mean that you can't achieve um, a look or a um, body composition uh, that you want yes you're never gonna look like me I'm never gonna look like Raymond um, the online coach I'm never gonna look like Mark Lobliner um, or Matt Ogus. Um, each of those people have their own unique individuality in the fact that their genetic makeup is different. Um, everyone wants Matt Ogus's black abs, they're perfect, um, but that's his genetics. 
Um, I don't like my ab genetics, but that's just me. I have um, strong legs and my bench sucks. That's just my genetics. Um, yes, I have worked at each of those in order to better them, which is where the working out, part, just the whole work in general comes from. Um, putting in the work to achieve the results you want is ultimately what's going to get you where you want to be. Having genetics that may help you get there quicker than another person, yes, that is going to, that's genetics. They, they do have um, an enhancing effect on some people. Um, but for everyone out there who isn't genetically gifted or thinks they have poor genetics, um, don't let that be a barrier um, for you to go out there and work hard and achieve um, the goals you want to achieve because chances are you can do it. So don't let genetics hold you back. Yes, some people are just genetically gifted, um, but there's nothing really you can do about it other than embrace who you are as a person. The next question comes from actually my friend Griffin. He asks, um, soda slash flavored liquor mixes or beer um, for college kids out there or people just who drink in general. And um, the first thing I'll say to that is any form of alcohol in a um, binge drinking fashion is not going to be great for your body at all, whether it's liquor or beer. Um, it's just putting your body in a not so ideal place. So that being said, um, if you are going to choose to drink, um, I do know a little bit as far as the contents of each. Um, they're pretty much the same. I know beer has a little bit more carbs on average um, than alcohol, a normal serving of alcohol would have. Um, but I'm sure it varies based on the alcohol. I myself am not a big drinker, um, and I do know that it has an effect on your protein synthesis, basically your recovery process, in a sense. Um, so if you are choosing to drink, I would probably um, recommend you drink the same amount of water as you are alcohol. And I know that's probably going to be like, oh, well, I'm not going to get a buzz or whatever, but um, that's what I would recommend. And for me, I would recommend drinking hydrating yourself before you start to drink as well so you're not trying to play catch up and really that's the only advice I have on it. Um, the other thing is if you're drinking mixed drinks or um, liquor chances are you're going to have a juice or a soda with that so that's going to come with extra um, carbs and calories um, in itself so be careful with that. Um, and as far as health benefits there's nothing really that's going to benefit you um, as far as um, losing weight or um, putting on muscle and um, so that's why I really just recommend you do it in moderation if you are choosing to drink. Moving on to the next question this is kind of a loaded question so I'll answer it briefly um, because it is um, it varies based on each person but he did ask what I use um, what I what my diet is for cutting or bulking and um, as far as bulking which is what I'm doing right now I really don't count macros at all um, the only thing I'm counting is my protein and my fiber daily. Um, protein, I'm a person who believes that you hit, you should hit a gram of protein per body weight daily. And there's a lot of people who think you should do more, um, but I just stick to a gram and I have had success with that. Um, as far as fiber, I recommend 10 to 15 grams of fiber per thousand calories you're eating. And that's really just to help your digestive system um, digest all those food because all those, all the food you eat because um, you're already eating um, such a large amount. <clears throat> so in terms of bulking, you're really just trying to find that maintenance level of calories, um, which there's a, a couple ways to do that, um, but after you find that maintenance level of calories, which is basically what you're burning on a daily basis, um, you then take that maintenance level of calories, which is what you're going to basically eat to remain the same, and you're either going to put yourself in a surplus or a deficit based on what your goal is. And like I said, this is kind of a detailed question um, to answer, um, but that's kind of the gist of it. I hope that kind of answers it um, to a certain degree. Um, in terms of carbs and calories, if I had to guess, um, because I have tracked um, frequently throughout this bulk, um, I would guess I would hit anywhere between 400 and 450 carbs per day, sometimes even 500, um, but 400 is probably my minimum I would hit in a day, and like I said, I'm naturally lean, so I am able to eat that many um, <clears throat> carbohydrates in a day without putting on too much weight at all, fat I should say, and for fat, it really varies on the day whether I'm eating out or eating at home, but it's really never over probably 100 grams unless I do go crazy and indulge 
and as far as my calories in general, I would imagine they're around 4,500 or so, depending on the day. So like I said, that, I hope that answers your question, man. A couple quick questions, um, ask how much I weigh. I weigh about 153 pounds in the morning. Um, at the end of the day, I weigh about 157, 158 based on how much I eat throughout the day. Um, but like I said, it kind of fluctuates. But normally, I'm, I have been waking up at around 153, 154 um, pretty consistently these last few weeks. And um, another kid asks, uh, what did I do to gain all the weight I did? And um, if you're not familiar with um, my Instagram at all, I will link it below. But I put on about 15 um, or so pounds since I graduated high school in the summer of 2014. And really the main thing I would attest to that is just eating a proper amount um, and that goes for um, my protein. I never even knew how much protein I should be intaking. Um, I just thought that protein shakes made you bigger and that was something you needed to do. Um, I didn't necessarily know that the protein itself was what you needed and didn't need to come from a powder form. So really the knowledge factor, knowing what to eat, knowing how much to eat and knowing my body type and knowing that I can eat a, cr a good good amount and I need to eat a good amount to even put on any muscle mass whatsoever. So knowing what I know now, I wish I could go back and play high school football, um, run track again um, with the frame I do now and the mindset I have now. But you live and you learn. And really, so putting on the weight, like I said, um, staying consistent. Um, I hit the gym. I haven't taken more than two days off in probably the whole time that, like I said, since I graduated, probably haven't taken more than two days off at all. Um, I come to enjoy the gym. It's not something that I do just to make my teammates happy and to make myself better for a sport. Um, it's something that I can do to relieve stress or just um, unwind and really put my mind into something and um, the same way that sports kind of do. For me, leaving high school and not being able to play sports anymore, I kind of need to find a niche and being able to go to the gym every day and progress and set goals for myself and hit those goals gave me that same type of um, excitement and enjoyment that sports did and that's why I really enjoy helping people doing what I do and um, it's really just something that I enjoy all around so back to your question um, really consistency is the main thing hitting the gym when you're supposed to be hitting the gym taking your proper rest days um, properly recovering and that means nutrition, hitting your protein, hitting your fiber, and um, really just finding out what type of body you have and learning that body. That is pretty much the main thing I, I would um, recommend for someone who is looking to consistently put on weight over time. Got to learn. Learn, do some research, look things up, and keep your ears open because always be learning because that is the, the only way you're going to ever um, kind of evolve yourself as a human. So hopefully this video is not too long guys and I hope you enjoyed it and can take away something from this. Um, I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching if you're still watching and please like the video if you did enjoy it and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already. I will be coming out with videos three to four times a week here on out so please come back and um, hopefully you can learn a lot more um, through my experiences and from what I have learned about the fitness world in general. So I just wanted to say thank you again, guys. I appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and have a great night.